Thank you very much, Chairman. Um, I'm not a professor, just a medical doctor with a lot of enthusiasm for the cause. And um, it's my pleasure to talk to you right before lunch about one more talk and a very big honor to be part of such an esteemed panel. And I would like to talk to you about adjuvant therapies in inverted papilloma. So how to try to reduce even more our recurrence rate if that's possible. And of course, we've been talking about inverted papilloma a lot already. And we know it's a benign tumor for which the primary treatment is surgery, origin uh, 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 located surgery. And it's very important to complete remove it at the attachment site, as been said by Professor Kamel a couple of times. Remove the mucoperiosteum and surrounding cough of mucosa, drilling, coagulation, but also it's a benign tumor. So I always think as having a balance. You want to remove it totally, but since it's primarily benign, you also have, want to have minimal morbidity. Then again, you do not want to have a revision. So how to put that all into one aspect? You don't want a revision because the best opportunity of achieving this complete resection is during first surgery. And we have a series of 121 cases over the past 10 years where we show this actually. We operated on 49 primary cases and 72 revision cases and the definition of a primary case is that it has been never operated anywhere before, just a biopsy. And the definition of a revision case is that somewhere it has been operated before it came into our hospital, before we first touched it. And you can see that the difference in recurrence is, is quite there. So the first surgery at the origin is the one to attack. Now, we also looked at factors that uh, um, were more prevalent in the recurrent cases, and we found differences in, well, the difficulty in finding attachment sites in revision cases more often than primary, a higher cross stage, also different distribution in attachment sites of the origin, so more, for example, in the frontal recess than with the primary case, and also higher incidence of dysplasia. But now I would like to take you to a, sm uh, a short patient case. And it's uh, concerning an 11-year-old girl who had bilateral nasal polyps, no CF. And taking a biopsy, it showed a Schneiderian papilloma, an exophytic and an inverted papilloma. And this was a tough case. It's a young person, and maybe we can show the video of the CT scan before the first surgery. So if you would like to play it. Somewhere in the back, please. If somebody's still there. I was told that they would play it from the back, so I, I really would like to show you this, this CT scan. I also have an MRI. So maybe somebody can knock on the window or something back there. Ah, there it goes. You see also multiple mucus seals concerning in the frontal sinus and polyps and opacification everywhere. That was the case before we attacked it with surgery. Now I also have the MRI, which is on the next slide, and maybe we can also have the video there. A bit slower, the thicker slides, back to front. You see the inspissated mucus, also IP here and there, mucus seal, deformation of the orbit. So we attacked it endoscopically and performed the draft three. And we found attachment in the frontal recess on the right and inside of the frontal sinus on the left. And pathology, yes, they uh, uh, came back with inverted and exophytic papilloma without malignancy. So we've done the draft three. Yet six months later, and this is not a, a movie, six months only later, it reoccurred with this young uh, girl. Um, but yes, what to do? We um, redid the surgery, basically revised our draft three. And you can guess, another six, five, six months later, again, this problem. So now we have this small child and we already operated uh, three times on her, uh, or two times on her, and we still have this problem in this young aged girl. And we were sort of, what to do, what to do? And then uh, my colleague, Professor Falkens, realized and thought of her experience with using 5-FU in the local post-operative treatment for adenocarcinoma with, with great effects on long-term survival. 
And, well, she consulted, we consulted with everybody in the hospital about the safety, extensive talks with the family. We redid the operation and put in topically afterwards on the gauze the 5-FU cream and left it there for two weeks. What happened basically is um, the tumor stayed away and we have a follow-up now of at least 66 months. So there was a, well, N is 1, so what can you say about N is 1? Not much, but at least we were happy that this girl, it helped. But it did spark our interest. Now what is this 5-FU? It's a chemotherapy, it's an antimetabolite, it blocks thymidylite synthase, thymidine is necessary for DNA replication, cell cycle arrest and apoptosis. Now is this the mechanism by which it attacks IP? I don't think so. But I hope that after attacking the origin, removing uh, the mucosa, drilling the attachment site, coagulating the drilled part, maybe this is just this one little extra layer of toxicness which could destroy that last cell that might turn into a recurrence. Is it safe? Well, it's used for locally for, for various uh, types of conditions without too many uh, side effects. And the systemic absorption of applying it locally is negligible. So it's, it's not that harmful uh, side effect wise. The side effects that are mentioned in the FDA are all concerning local irritation and inflammatory reactions. So burning, crossing, erosion, pain, ulceration. That of course, it is very toxic. So we started using it, but only in selected cases, only after doing our, our very, very best to totally remove the IP, but then if we were not totally sure, for example, if it was attached at the cribriform plate, you don't want to make several CSF leaks, or very far on the orbital roof in front of sinus IP, so it really was a personal choice of the surgeon. Mm -hmm. And first we used it in only frontal cases, so we used it in seven frontal cases, of the 19 we did in that series, and we did not have any recurrence, but still it's, it's very little. This is an image of the gauze inside the draft 3 opening. We just smeared it full with this cream and left it there for two weeks. Now then we sort of expanded, not only frontal, but also in other cases where we thought, mm, we just don't know, crib reform plate, very anterior inferior in the medial maxillectomy, which is a very difficult corner sometimes endoscopically. Uh, 12 times after first surgery, six times after recurrent surgery, 18 times in total, with one recurrence, which is about 6% and a follow-up of more than one year. And, well, still it is a very small group and you always have to be very careful with these small groups and percentages because everything looks maybe very nice, but it's only 18. But if you look at the period 2003 until 2007, before we started incorporating this 5FU in selected cases and after, you see a drop in recurrence rate from 18.2 to 10.2. So I hope that's just a little more than just a learning curve or anything. So what's next? I looked up all the cases up until 2016 and now, from 2007 to 2016, we have 31 cases, and maybe that's a group where you can try to start to say anything about whether it has an effect or not. We had six recurrences, which amounts to 18.2%, so that's a different number. Um, but then this group is a bit larger, so how to say something about that? Because you really have to keep in mind that this is a very selected group, this is sort of a a bad prognosis group. We only use it where we think Ugh, we're not entirely sure. So what I try to do is to compare apples with apples, which is not easy. So I took the group of 2003 to 2007, which is the group before we started incorporating it, and compared it to this group. And then also this group, um, I looked at the, the, the patients where we used it directly after first surgery because the group of 2003 until 2007 basically is a group where you did your first surgery and you look at recurrences. So if you do that, looking after the case where you use it at first surgery and compare that with 21 cases uh, with one recurrence as opposed to this, this, this earlier group, a recurrence of 18.2. So that's, that's not bad at all, I think. 
And then we did eight primary cases where we used it directly after because it was a difficult case in our idea. We had zero recurrences and we did 13 revision cases and we had 7.7%. So, and that's a lot lower than the ones of the group of 2003 until 2007. So maybe that's a bit optimistic. And I, I still think it it's, uh, might be a good idea. So where are all these recurrences then? They are in uh, the multiple recurrence groups. Of course, we also used it after multiple recurrent IP, and then we thought, ah, let's put in 5FU at a later, later stage. And uh, we have 10 cases where we only use it after multiple recurrence with five recurrences. But these are bad IPs. These are inverted papillomas that arise underneath a flap for reconstruction of a CSF leak or at the apex of the orbit or in, in, the, in the region of, of weak tissue where the nasolacrimal system had been removed years earlier before Epiphora. So, but still looking at these numbers, I think it might have um, a place as an adjuvant therapy, especially since there's not a lot of harm done. Of course, it's off-label, you need to discuss this, but still, I think it's very promising. And of course, the next step would be collect more cases and look into differences in dysplasia and locations. So, are there any complications? Well, we had one case of transient periorbital swelling, local, irritative, we took the tampon out, continued augmenting, and everything was settled. So is it a possible adjunct? Maybe. I'm, I'm slowly positive. Meticulous and complete surgery is one. But it's relatively low risk, so if you have good informed consent, I think it's worth a try. Of course, it's a highly selective population, but given the fact that we have 31 cases now, I say we can start to say things about this. So I would like to uh, give you that. And thank you very much. Off to lunch.